And hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Rich Sports Talk. I am joined by Chelsea Layden. Chelsea, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Now, Chelsea, I've known Chelsea for a while now, and I, I've known her from a different world than what many of you might know of. She's on the show Destination Fear on the Travel Channel, but we actually crossed paths at Quinnipiac University where she was a star goaltender so for your destination fear fans this is something i don't think a lot of them know about you could you tell them about your career playing hockey starting from quinnipiac and then eventually even making it to the professional level sure yeah i have kind of two different lives that um have been kind of they don't have a lot of crossover so this is nice to kind of introduce everybody to a very important chapter of my life um, which was playing um, Division One hockey for an awesome school, um, Quinnipiac University. Um, actually, when I was first recruited to Quinnipiac University, I did not know about the school at all. Um, the name, I didn't even know how to say it. I still don't know if I'm totally saying it right, but um, it was one of those university schools where I went and I visited and I just like fell in love with it. I had other schools I was visiting, but I just like knew Quinnipiac University was the right fit for me. Um, and it was a developing program at the time uh, for hockey. It was always a, a great school um, for education, but hockey was, you know, this really um, flourishing school that I could just tell had a lot of potential. And I was really honored to be part of that. And it ended up being where um, I, I wasn't supposed to be the starting goalie right away. I'm a goaltender, um, so I'm the one between the pipes blocking all the shots, um, for those of you who don't know. And um, Victoria Vigilante was actually the main goalie at the time, the, the starting goalie, so I learned a lot from her. And then um, I kind of started to um, establish more of a starting position, more so my third and fourth year. And we ended up being like a nationally ranked top 10 team in the country um just like the coaches told me we'd be it was kind of one of those things where you know i was hoping for that and it ended up being awesome uh our team was really known for our like defensive culture kind of starting from goalie and working our way up which isn't all hockey teams i'm sure you know uh, you know some people are all about the offense trying to score as many goals as we can but quinnipiac culture especially for the women's side is really start at your own net and kind of work forward so it was awesome as a goalie to be part of that team but it was well, really fun. I mean you also did an incredible job I mean Chelsea's very modest because she broke so many records at the school like I part of my job I was a graduate assistant covering the hockey program was keeping track of her records it seemed like every week there's a new record or a new milestone for Chelsea and it eventually ended up with her being drafted by the CT whale in the NWHL, but then your career took a bit of a different turn. So you retired from professional hockey, then you went to become an optometrist, which you are still in the process. You're almost done with that process. And then all of a sudden, you pop up on the show called Destination Fear. And when I heard you were going to be on a show, I'm like, I can see Chelsea easily doing this because of how personal she's been. But then when I heard she was also staying to be an optometrist at the same time, like, how is she doing this? But then I realized part of the benefit of being a college athlete, and I think this is one thing a lot of athletes will sorely miss, unfortunately, this fall, is they learn a lot of balance. Like, when I see student athletes go out into the world, they're exceptional at balancing tasks. And I see how you're juggling basically two big hats, some careers that would be hard for one person to handle at one time, but you're doing a TV show and studying to be an optometrist. I mean, I think that that's incredible. Do you think hockey and being a student athlete has helped you be able to balance all those things at one time? That is a really great point. Um, hockey, I felt that I was juggling two things at once as well. Um, being on the Quinnipiac women's, net, or women's team was already just such a commitment um, you know, as any other division one sport is, but, um, you know, that's a lot of time a day and balancing that with pre-med, I always knew I wanted to be a doctor and that was my big end game, my, my goal. 
Um, so just balancing that strong, like really heavy academic workload with a very, very like physically like draining sport was huge challenge for me. And it helped me one realize I can do a lot more than I think I can because I feel like you, you only can learn that by doing it. You have to put yourself in positions that are going to stretch you um, pretty thin. And at the time, there were moments, of course, where I was like, I can't do this. Like, <laughs> this, there's no way. Um, but with not only, you know, the help of coaches and help of teammates and friends and family, um, a lot of people's accomplishments, you know, although one person usually gets recognized for it, there's so many other people involved and I have to give all those people credit as well. It really does um, all those things play a role, you know, but definitely being exposed to those two things, um, both the academics and hockey really did at least pave the way to like make me have confidence that I can do more than one thing, even if it looks pretty aggressive. <laughs> And that's a perfect segue into the next thing, which for many of the Destination Fear fans I'm, and for people that don't know what the show Destination Fear is, is basically Chelsea, along with her brother and uh, other staff members, they get locked in a haunted or abandoned building basically at night and they look to solve paranormal, see if they can get paranormal activity. And I do think that hockey – and I don't know if you'll agree with this, but I think it's also it's helped you tremendously on this show because when you're an athlete, you want to keep pushing yourself even when you know it might not be the best idea. So, I mean, we've seen a couple of times on the show where you've been put in very difficult situations. I mean, you're locked in a dungeon by your brother. So I, 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 don't, I, I don't think you got a good Christmas present that year because of this. But uh, so talk about that. Like, do you think, Hockey and being an athlete has helped prepare you for the show and being put into these uncomfortable environments and situations. Of course, yes, that's also a good point. I feel like any athlete can say this, but even if you're not playing a sport and you were a competitive person, that competitiveness carries over to the rest of your life. And I don't like to be told that I can't do something or I don't like to be presented with something that I say no to, or I don't at least try. Um, so there was so much of that in Destination Fear. And uh, actually Destination Fear started by um, Dakota, who's my brother, and our, my two best friends who are also the co-stars on the show. We grew up um, kind of going to these abandoned buildings and kind of challenging ourselves. And you know, we never spent the night. That totally happened with the show and the documentary, but that's another story. But we ended up totally like pushing ourselves to the limit and I think when you get a bunch of competitive people in, in one environment and under these circumstances it can get it can get pretty intense <laughs> and I, before I get to the next point I do think that's one of the great things about your show is that you can tell you guys are all friends you grew up together there's a great camaraderie and to me it reminds me personally and I think a lot of people can attest to this where when you're young, there's always that like creepy abandoned building in your town or the scary story about the house at the end of the block. And you all kind of want as kids, like go explore and do something and see those abandoned buildings and try to prove how tough you are. So I think it connects with a lot of people like that. But in terms of you were just kind of hinting at you know, with Dakota. Now, how did the process of the show come about? I know you had shot a documentary. I forget which place it was, but I know you had mentioned it in season two. You talk about the process of how you pitch the show to Travel Channel or the process of getting the show to Travel Channel, because I always find that fascinating of how shows are developed and then eventually put through and become a television show. Yeah, I mean, this was a total learning experience for me, too. I am not in the film industry, and um, well, I wasn't. <laughs> and so this whole process was, you know, super new to me. Um, we actually shot the documentary during my Christmas break when I played in the NWHL. So I went straight from playing to this crazy road trip and then went right back into practicing, side note. Um, but so we did this documentary as a passion project. Um, my brother's a filmmaker. My two best friends who are also part of the show are filmmakers and they wanted to create this project that related to our childhood growing up, going to these abandoned buildings, and but they wanted to make it more entertaining. 
Um, they wanted to add more intensity to it. And that's pretty much all I knew when I agreed to it, by the way. Um, didn't know we'd be trying to sleep alone at these places when I uh, said yes to it. Uh, so it's kind of later on when I found out. But um, then we made the documentary, uh, which has still not yet been released. Dakota's holding on to it. Um, he doesn't. He wants to do something with it, but it's still um, a very much hidden project. He had two viewings, two or three viewings at the Mall of America that were sold out. So only a handful of people got to see it. And then um, he just started entering that um, documentary into film, uh, different film festivals. And, you know, if, if the film gets in the right hands, then, you know, it kind of speaks for itself or people talk. And it's kind of one of those industries where um, you put yourself out there, you put in the work and um, you, it's, it's totally a toss up. There are some great filmmakers who don't, you know, get the, the they don't get noticed or they don't get the fame that they should because it's just such a weird industry. It's not like you go take your MCAT and become a doctor or OAT and become an optometrist. It's, you know, it's kind of just like up to fate and up to hard work. So I actually was in school for were two and a half, three years before anything really happened with it. And my life was very much established at the time. I was like almost a doctor. You know, I had my schedule down finally in my life. And then I get a phone call that the show got picked up. And I totally didn't even know that that was even in the cards anymore. And I had to make a big decision at that moment to do it just because, you know, my life could have been is so different at two and a lot could happen in two and a half years, you know. And now before I ask about the decision, I, I do have to say about Dakota and a little bit of background, like he was in the industry filming and behind the scenes and I do have to give him a lot of credit because I know it was a long process, but so many times, especially in this industry, so many people, especially studio heads, want to get in and tinker a lot. And to me, you can tell from the show that it is Dakota's vision. It's what he wanted out there. So I have to give your brother a lot of credit for not only creating something different, but also creating something that is his own and something that is unique. But but going on to that did he have to like urge you into signing up for this or was it a decision that you really had to think about in order to do this because like you said your life was established this was a bit of a risk i mean to me it reminds me a little bit when you went to quinnipiac slightly because you took a risk it was something where it probably wasn't the most likely choice but it ended up turning well so when you came up to this decision did Dakota have to really push you or was it pretty easy that you just decided, okay, I'm going to do this? Yeah, I mean, it was actually easier than I thought it would be. Um, just given that opportunity to be part of my brother and my best friend's like dream, like although filmmaking and being on camera isn't like ultimately what I wanted to do, uh, just being able to be a participant in like their next step and what their end goal is too was that was like the main driving force for that decision. Um, and then, you know, everything, uh, there was a lot of scary moments and moments that I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so like this, I can't believe I'm doing this, but just being able to travel, um, you know, across the country and, you know, although we're going to the places where no one would even want to go, um, just the road tripping and I never got to do that as a you know division one hockey player where I got to like actually travel and really enjoy um, locations outside of hockey rinks <laughs> so um, there were a lot of incentives and pros and cons that I, I mean, the pros definitely outweighed the cons and I knew it was going to be tough to juggle uh, but you know what I I just had to figure out a way to take all my academics. I was studying on the road. They had to make sure they allocated time for me to study. So it was definitely way more planned out, knowing that I had to study on the road because um, we had to stop filming when I studied. <laughs> but it worked out. Yeah, I just would not study in one of the uh, places without any lights, although that's basically all of them, because uh, <laughs> one of my favorite scenes was, and I don't think people appreciate this, is when you were, I think it was down the dungeon, or it was one of the basements, but, because everything you shoot is with the ultraviolet, so you can see at night, you can see the night vision, but then... Yeah. 
people think like, oh, this is what they're seeing. But then you turn it off and you can't even see anything. anything. It's, it's so frightening. And I think that's one element to the show that I think adds to it. Because even if people are skeptical about the paranormal, this is a bit like fear factor where you're in an uncomfortable environment where there's no lights. It can be very dangerous. And yet you have to still push yourselves through it because you guys have made it through some nights where you see some of the things on the show that happen. And I'm like, Nope, I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm gone. <laughs> I've said that line a lot <laughs> over the past year. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. This is not all about paranormal. It's, um, about facing your fears and I am sure there are so many people who have been in their basement at their non-haunted house um, and they just think something might be behind them or they get scared and they kind of go a little bit quicker up the stairs you know it's, it's a very like relevant uh, emotion fear is and we're not just dealing with that we're dealing with animals we're dealing with no lights. We're dealing with being sometimes put in the middle of nowhere. I'm always scared people are going to break in because that happens. Like even when we were younger and we were bopping around places, that terrifies me being like sleeping alone and like only having a walkie talkie, which honestly works like half the time anyways, depending on how far away you are from people. Like totally like you said, so many more dimensions into fear than the paranormal absolutely but i think part of what makes a good show too is being able to connect with the people and one of the things i think your intro does incredibly well is it talks about how you and your brother had paranormal experiences when you were younger and i think that that's great for a lot of fans because it's like okay why are they doing this there has to be a reason and you mentioned that you did this a lot when you were younger but I think the reason why you're really looking for the paranormal activity is because there's always those questions that you have and you try to get a greater understanding. So when you were younger, what were some of the experiences that you and your brother experienced that basically helped plant the seed for this idea of a TV show that came almost two, days left, two decades later? Yeah, I mean, just going back to kind of that like childhood story, I've noticed just from having this show, if you talk to, like, if you ask anyone about a ghost story or about some kind of story, unexplained story, so many people have them. Whether they believe in ghosts or not, they're like, okay, well, this one time, you know, fill in the blank. So we just happen to have a lot more of those stories growing up. We lived on a home that was apparent, we built it. My parents built it. And apparently it was built on, like, burial grounds from a long time ago. We didn't know that till we started, you know, asking our neighbors, like, what's going on? Like, this isn't making sense. Um, but we had a lot of things. Everyone in our house had something. Um, personally, mine, my quick story was I was in my room, doors were closed, lights were off. It was like 3 a.m. And I heard, you know how you can like see light through your eyelids, even though like your eyes aren't open? The lights turned on in my room. And I like did one of those like kind of like confused like half open eyes and I realized my door was still shut and the actual light flip was up. So someone had actually flipped up the light and I got so scared that I just like closed my eyes and I could see the lights turn off again. And then I, I didn't do anything about it. Like my reaction to fear then was just to like pretend I didn't notice it. Um, and then I like, told my parents and tons of stuff started happening in our house. We'd have radios that would go from zero to like a hundred with volume, like, and it was different radios. So it wasn't like one radio that was like malfunctioning. There was a lot of weird stuff. One night, all of our TVs just turned on. Just the weirdest, creepiest things. I've never actually seen anything myself or felt anything um, physically, but that was enough for me to be super, super freaked out and ask a lot of questions. And I think that's part of the reason why you can tell you guys are very into the show and you want to find answers because when you have that experience that you can't explain, I think it's just human nature just to continue trying to figure out why this happened, how could this happen, because there's just a, more questions than answers. And I, you can see that on the show. And you talk about your experience when you were younger. Now, 
we've seen a lot of moments on the show where people have been impacted. Was there one moment in particular that was the scariest for you? I know it's been two seasons. I know there's a lot of moments that you've had, but is there one moment that just comes to mind like that was the scariest situation that you were in? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot, like you said, um, but I think there's one that like stands out more than others just because it's still something we talk about to this day. And it's like one of those episodes where we like haven't totally gotten over yet. Um, and it actually was at a location called Sweet Spring Sanitarium. And it was, it was the weirdest thing. Um, basically long story short, we did our whole split up. It wasn't even that bad of a night. The whole night we were actually kind of like, Oh, like, this isn't too bad. Like, you know, with this, you know, that like stuff doesn't happen all the time. Like sometimes there's hours that pass and you're just like, okay, this is not going to be a very entertaining show, but you don't, you get what you get. But so we all split up. And the weird part about my scary story is you don't even capture the, the, the scariness of it because I processed it differently at when I was there than, than what really happened. So long story short, I'm in my sleeping arrangement and I heard someone in the hallway say hello. And it sounded exactly like Tanner, who was my friend, who was actually in that basement wing with me, but on the far, far, like a football field and half away. And so I'm like, why is he in my hallway? But it sounded exactly like him. So I just, I kind of just looked back with my flashlight, like didn't even say anything. So I'm like, he's gonna ruin my scene. Like, what is he doing? And then I realized, after the fact it wasn't him at all because I saw his footage I saw everyone's footage wasn't him and he started hearing what sounded like me in his hallway and I guess at first he thought it was me and then he realized that it was totally not because then the voice started changing and everything but it was one of those like mind-blowing moments where we thought it was something and then we left and we're like oh that's way scarier now because it wasn't either one of us Right. <laughs> yeah it does because like if something like falls or like you hear sounds like that can sometimes be explained it can be right. ex especially because you're in older buildings buildings that are no longer taken care of but to hear a voice that not only is a voice but sounds like a voice that you know and you recognize because our voices are very distinctive it's it's very hard to replicate that in any capacity so just the fact that not only did Tanner hear your voice, but you heard Tanner's voice, and then at the end of the night, you're like, well, "Wait a minute, you were talking." It was to me. so yeah. confusing, and I think that's why, like you said before, like when you can't prove something and you want answers or something, like that's when you approach something more, and that's exactly what happened, and that's what happens with this show. Is like I feel like the more we like go and explore we call ourselves explorers like not investigators because like that's what we're doing mm -hmm. um it's not like we're like professionals in the field we're just going and experiencing each location um but like you said those questionable moments where you're like what just happened make you want to continue and make you want to keep doing what you're doing well, well i know your fans are are desperate for more episodes and I guess the big question is you like everyone else in the industry or basically in the country has been impacted by the coronavirus now from the outside looking in from my perspective in some cases a show like yours would seem to be better off because you have such a small crew and you're almost basically quarantined on your van anyway so yeah <laughs> uh, I guess my question is, with the coronavirus, not only has, has it impacted the show, but is it impacting your career as an optometrist, and could there be any crossover problems with the coronavirus impacting both fields for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Like you said, coronavirus right now is pretty much impacting every field, every person in some regard. Um, as far as the show goes, like even the show, the, even the, the company is called Travel Channel and like traveling is very much like limited right now. Um, so although there's hopes and plans for more, um, there's just so many um, different safety measures we have to go through and talk about, discuss, make sure everything is, you know, aligned and 
smooth. There's so many regulations and um, obviously Travel Channel wants to make sure everyone's safe and being put in a, um, a safe environment. So fingers crossed. We really want to provide more of our adventure to everyone, um, especially now. Like people, you know, are wanting entertainment and um, although the world's already pretty scary right now, you know, maybe deflecting that fear somewhere else for a little bit um, would be good for everyone. And um, we're hoping, we really are, um, to give more shows. And as far as optometry goes, um, I actually haven't really, in the beginning of our schooling and this externship, this is my last year for externships, so I'm just seeing patients now. Um, in the beginning, it was pushed back a little bit just with the uncertainty of you know, what's going on and getting prepared with the proper equipment and stuff. But we're back to seeing patients and people are still needing glasses, still needing contacts, and they still have their eye emergencies. So I'm right back into seeing a handful of patients every day. So that's good. Um, it's going to be interesting if we start filming again, how we're going to orchestrate, you know, my optometry, um, you know, externship with the filmmaking, but that's something I always just kind of go play it by, you know, ear, just kind of go with it. And I hope that we can figure out a way for it to all work out. I've been lucky where people have been very flexible with my schedules um, in helping in that regard. So I'm just hoping that it all works out, but no promises. <laughs> yeah, well, I know a lot of people definitely want to see you back and just two more questions. I mean, the first one's really quick. I mean, when are you guys going to come up to Connecticut, your old stomping grounds? I mean, I hopefully that's maybe in the cards for season three. I know a lot of people in Connecticut would love to see uh, Chelsea Layden back up here. But uh, I guess to finish up today, how has your life really changed over the course of the series? Because it's been over two years now. You've not only continued your career as an optometrist, but I mean, you've seen your career grow, getting a second season. Have you noticed your life changing? Do you see people recognizing you more? Have you had to change and adapt with the TV show and becoming more well-known in the public eye? You know, that's a great question. Um, I've all, I feel like even playing Division One hockey, I've always been put, um, you know, in this category where you do have extra eyes on you and you... Um, you know, it's always been one of those things where I've been really careful just, you know, being a good role model and, um, I'm not perfect or anything like that. I still, you know, definitely not perfect, but, um, I've always been kind of put in that, in that direction and on like, a, you know, some kind of platform where, um, I do have eyes on me, whether it's young little hockey girls who, you know, want to play division one hockey someday. Um, or whether it's, you know, just people watching the show. I do try to bring a lighter um, energy to my social media platforms and stuff like that, too. I know that can be used to kind of bring people down, not even intentionally, but just by posting all the stuff that we already know is going on um, in the world. I like to try to just keep it lighthearted, and um, I think that's kind of helped, and it's, you know, it's just, it's, good to be a little bit light in this world right now <laughs> yeah and also good to be scared from time to time too yeah. as you <laughs> you and your brother and your friends have taught us but thank you yeah. so much for joining us here today i know both your hockey fans and both your destination fear fans are excited to see what you're doing next i mean i'm excited to see what you do next like if you were to tell me a couple of years ago when you graduated oh yeah she's going to be not only a great optometrist but she's also going to be the star of a show where she's locked in abandoned buildings trying to look for paranormal activity i would have been like that seems like a little bit of a stretch but <laughs> but it's great to see where you're growing and to see not only the growth of your career but to see the growth of you i mean you know to see you grow up over the last couple of years and to what you become is very exciting and i know this is just the beginning so the best of luck to you chelsea i'm excited to see where everything goes i know destination fear fans they're hoping for season three. So hopefully you guys can go start getting scared again very soon. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been nice to catch up and to talk to you. It's been a while. <laughs> I know it's been a while, but it was great to see you and uh, looking forward to see what happens next.